First, inside the operation to bring down a cruel dating scam. Tonight, our cameras were granted exclusive access as police arrested some of the alleged fraudsters. And you'll hear from the brave women who lost their life savings looking for love. Online dating isn't always what it's cracked up to be. And for these vulnerable women, it was a gateway for scammers to steal their life savings. It was at that point that I realised that I had um, lost everything that I had. I took out two loans to cover my bills and max my credit card, so long as people didn't know what had happened. These scammers are very well versed in what they do. They pick their targets well. What was your role in the alleged scam? Have you been money laundering? Jane's a 58-year-old nurse from Sydney who was looking for love when her life was turned upside down in 2019. I thought this was going to get me out of a bind, if you like, and in fact, it put me in a, the biggest bind of my life. I went onto a dating site called Silver Singles and responded to a message from a prospective partner, attractive, quite handsome, fair-haired, um, he called himself Walter Hayes. This is who she thought she was talking to, but Walter wasn't real. The man in the photos isn't in on the scam and could also be a victim. I actually didn't want to lend him the money initially and he just melted me to just believe that he was the man for me. The scammer began extracting money from Jane by feeding her sob stories. The container slipped off the stacking and rolled onto the cargo men. Two of them are dead. I feel responsible for this. I feel I need to do something for their families to lessen the pain. Within just three months, Jane had handed over every cent she had. 500,000, which was the difference of me being able to, you know, maybe give up my work a little bit sooner and um, and maybe set things up for me to, you know, have an income at the end of my nursing. I borrowed money too from two unsecure lenders as well and I also remortgaged my unit to get more. So he's telling me but it was when he asked Jane to sell her unit that she realised she'd been duped. I felt sick. I, I, I couldn't stop crying. I sat in a park and then the first people I rang was actually the bank in the hope that I wasn't going to lose absolutely everything. And then I felt ashamed and, and then the worst part was having to tell my family. And Jane's not alone. This 74-year-old grandmother who doesn't want to be identified was also played. She thought she was falling in love, but the man was a fraud. His name was Al, and he sent me a photograph, very good looking, um, very well dressed. Like Jane's fake lover, police say the person in the photos isn't in on the scam. Stuff in my life had happened where I was vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable. And I did it. I sent him the money. In emails, the scammer said... Dear my heart robber, another night without you by my side. And... Good night from UK and good morning in Australia, my love. I love you so much, forever that is. Before signing off with details on how to transfer him money. It was for him to get to Portugal to see his mum. That was the first instance. The first time I became sus was probably down the track, 12 months at least, I think. And I had to transfer some money to a bank in Switzerland. And how much money did you lose? Look, I think it would probably be between 150000 to 170000 That is a hell of a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It was all my savings. Did you feel used? Yes, I did. I felt used and abused. 
Detective Acting Inspector Stephen Peroni says more than $7 million has been stolen by the alleged scam syndicate that uses romance, business and email scams to rob Aussies online. The vast majority of it has travelled offshore. We don't know to exactly which country. We've identified Nigeria as a country where a lot of these funds have been sent to. Strikeforce Kochi was launched in March last year to take down the Australian arm of the alleged scam syndicate. And police allege this week they've nabbed the middlemen of the operation. 25 people have already been arrested and detectives say 50 victims have been left out of pocket. It started with a post-it note placed on a detective's desk saying, can you please give this person a ring? She believes she's been the victim of a fraud. From there it snowballed to the job that we have now with the 25 arrests and 136 charges. Police raided several homes this week and arrested the final five men who detectives allege were money mules helping to move the cash offshore. Do you understand that? It can be me. Do you understand that? I don't know what this is about yet. You don't know what this is about? One of the accused is Edenosa Erio, who won a bronze medal at the 2006 Disability Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. So far we've recovered over half a million dollars that have been returned to victims. New South Wales Police's intelligence will now be shared with Interpol in the hope more can be done to recover what's been lost. The best weapon that we have in this is an educated community that are aware of these scams and to report them to police at the earliest opportunity. And for more details on scams, head to our website.